Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Juggernaut and uh, today let's talk a little bit about Troy and uh, the state of Total War games in general right now. So, the game in the background is Warhammer 2 Total War, I'm going to play the Imric campaign for you a little bit, uh, but I will throw in a few screenshots here and there of um, various relevant things as they pop up. So, with that said, let's talk about Troy. Oh boy, oh boy. So, Troy is a brand new, upcoming Total War release, and it is set in the sort of uh, domain of the mythical. Now, I actually take, um, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm graduating right now, a mythology course, so it's kind of interesting to look at the game from various perspectives, or at least it would have been were it not for the fact that the game looks iffy at best. It's going to be something unprecedented, though, and that is a day one free-to-keep release. Now, from a AAA title, this is strange, to say the least. Um, I don't think there's ever been a case, at least not as, as far as I know, I don't think there's ever been a case of a game coming out, a AAA game coming out and being free to play, or free to keep even, on day one. Now, games go free to keep eventually, this is true, there is nothing um, unusual or special about it, it happens, but free to keep on day one? Usually they go free to keep after a few years in development and after there's a, you know, a dozen or so pieces of DLC released and then, yeah, after all of that you can go, okay, we're gonna make it a free-to-keep game for like a day and then you introduce new people and the idea behind it is very basic you sell DLC but Troy is looking like a disaster from the get-go I mean this means that although this is a deal with Epic and it will be an Epic exclusive for a year this to my mind suggests that they essentially are saying the game is pretty bad right and we just want to we just want people to play it, I guess, and we just want to release it for a deal and, like, a quick cash grab off of Epic. That's what it suggests to me. Again, I don't know. It's still in development, so on and so forth. But I do want to show you a screenshot that was recently posted, like, today. Uh, or at least I think it's today. And um, I want to show you something. So, through the magic of editing. And, yeah, here it is. So, this is the Total War Troy map. Count the number of regions. It's really not that much. It's a pretty small map. I mean, compare it to something like Warhammer, where... Yeah. And plus, you know, the, the billion different races and, and all the different mechanics for each different race, so on and so forth. But, like, it's... It just seems off, if that makes any sense. So, I want to talk a little bit about the general future of, of um, Total War as it stands right now, and the direction these, these games have taken. Now, I'm going to speak a little bit in defense of CA here, because I think it'll be only fair to do so. They're trying to expand the Total War strategy genre to new audiences. And it's understandable, you want, to, you want more people to pick up your game, you want to sell more copies, and you want to look for a new audience. Going on Epic and making it free to play for the or for, free to keep, sorry, for the first day is sensible in that respect that you want to acquire a new audience and people like criticize them. Well, how are you going to get a new audience if you don't if you don't release the game both on Epic and on Steam, especially given the fact that uh, Epic is a um, controversial platform to say the absolute least and. True enough, it is controversial, but on the other hand, it does make sense if you want to capture new audiences. However, the problem is this golden goose of new audiences has never really been captured, ever, by anyone. Whenever a company tried to expand quickly into a branch, into, into, into a new audience, it inevitably led to the fail uh, or to the fail, <laughs> to the fail, to the failure of the genre. Look at Dawn of War, look at countless other examples. So, also, um, basically all the news that came out for Troy so far points to just beyond questionable design decisions. 
And what I mean by that is, so far, everything we've heard about the units, the gameplay, seems like a bad idea on paper. Now, I don't know, I haven't played the game, I haven't beta tested it or whatever. Um, I didn't get a hands-on... Uh, what's it called, though? Like a hands-on look at the game. But the people that did are saying the same thing unless they're basically being paid to not say anything negative about the game, and in those cases it's really, really obvious. But of the ones that are given free rave, or given a... Uh, what's the expression? Like... Ah, whatever. Given, like, freedom to say whatever they want about the game, they're all universally saying negative things about it, and it's... Well, it's worrying, to say the least. Especially considering the direction Total War has taken in recent years, and, and, and this is kind of what I want to focus on primarily. The direction Total War has taken in, in, in recent years is also pretty darn worrying. Namely, we see more and more titles that are aiming at... that are aimed at basically an audience that doesn't exist, that are aimed at a new audience, and they get released at the cost or at the detriment of already existing fans quite often. Now, we saw the case of the disastrous Rome release, we saw the case of the not-so-great releases of... Hell, I mean, you could argue this was going on since Empire, but really, for me, since Attila and Rome, Total War has taken a bit of an odd route, and I see problems in the design everywhere, essentially. Now, this could be just my pessimistic nature, but pretty much everything that isn't Warhammer-related from Total War has not been very good recently. And, yeah, it's, uh, it's not looking good. And this is sort of what I wanted to focus on for the, for the majority of the video here, because we're dealing with a company that I truly, truly love. Uh, a game series that I truly love, and all too often have these cases happened where in an ambitious plan to expand, to acquire new audiences, to innovate, to change the uh, already working formula, disasters have happened, right? And that, that, that's an understatement. So, yeah, it's... Um, it's worrying, and I don't want to see that happen. So I want to. See, what, I, what I mean is, this is coming from a from a place of of good intentions. Um, now there are those, obviously, that prefer smaller maps and more focused campaigns, and that's okay. And uh, the way that was solved in a few Total War games, mainly, uh, well, yeah, in a few Total War games, um, I'm, I'm thinking about Attila. There's the the like. There's, like, different campaigns there, which some are smaller, some are more focused, some are not so much. But anyways, um, the way that's been solved is through either mini-campaigns within the game to, like, try to appeal to both sides, even though the people that prefer smaller maps and, and more focused campaigns are usually overwhelmingly the, the minority. But not that that really matters all that much. Um, the thing is... I would say, oh, sorry, okay, I would say that the majority of the community prefer games that are on larger maps, prefer games that cover multiple different cultures and nations and factions, that cover multiple time periods, if at all possible, uh, even though Total War is usually focused on one time period, but there are ex uh, exceptions to this, like Medieval. And what I'm basing these assumptions off of are the number of concurrent players. Some of the most played Total War games still to this day are Rome, the original, Medieval, Empire is up there as well, believe it or not, um, Napoleon because it's, well, it's Napoleon, it's the only gunpowder one that's really good. I mean, Empire's, don't get me wrong. Empire has the scale going for it. You have, like, almost a quarter of the planet or so, right? Well, I actually don't know the numbers specifically, but, like, you have three different continents. It's insane. Uh, the scale of it is is what, it's, what, what it has going for it, mostly. 
and usually the smaller titles, the ones with the more focused campaigns and maps, aren't doing so well. Um, now, recently Shogun um, is doing great, but that's for another reason, like, Shogun is unique in and of its own right, we don't have many strategy games about Feudal Japan to begin with, but even if we did, um, Shogun is like... It has game mechanics going for it that the other Total War titles didn't, and yeah, so on and so forth. So there, there are exceptions to this rule, but on the whole, in general, I think people prefer a larger map. And th the focus on Troy and, and, like, specifically this conflict doesn't seem like a great design decision, but I want to move away from that a little bit, because these are so, sort of, like, general... This is, like, like general talk and general um, thoughts on, on the design of the game, which aren't that relevant. What's a lot more relevant to me is the various details we've received about the title itself. Namely, the kinds of units, the absolute lack of cavalry, the fact that mythological units, the sort of, I would argue, most interesting part of the game, and... I mean, if your game is called Troy, then mythology should be at its heart. And yes, I understand trying to balance realism and myth and, you know, incorporating it into a sort of, um... new and exciting system, I suppose. I understand that fully. That's that's commendable. But if you're going to make, if you're going to call it Troy, and you're going to, you know, get a focus, get a total war that's that's focused, or make a total war that's focused around mythology at least partially, to have only one mythological unit present on the map at any given time, like the entirety of the map, is silly in my opinion, and quite possibly very detrimental to the game, but, you know, anyways. Uh, maybe that's just me being wrong, I don't know, we will see. Uh, I guess that's the, the, the point of this entire spiel, but we can only speculate based on what we've seen so far, and uh, what we've seen so far isn't the greatest. Anyhow, though, be that as it may, um... The unit design as well, sorry I'm focusing on moving my archers. The unit design is also very worrying, because what they've said so far is that units will essentially fall into three categories, and the way the three categories are balanced doesn't seem very balanced at all. Now, it's difficult to talk about balance when you've um, not played the game, obviously, but again, some people have, they're saying similar things, also... The way CA have, CA have phrased this is fairly simple and doesn't make it so that, you know, there can be outlandish differences between what we've heard and, and, and what's actually going to happen. So, for those that don't know, um, essentially the game's going to have a three infantry unit type system. Light, medium, and heavy infantry. Medium being utterly useless because they have none of the benefits that light or medium, uh, light or heavy have, but they're sort of like in the middle, I guess, units, which I understand have their, um, have their reason for existing, but mm, no. Then we have light infantry, which moves as fast as cavalry. And you said you wanted a more realistic system. Which is, yeah, okay, I'm um, sure. So light infantry now moves as fast as cavalry, which doesn't exist for some reason. That realism, I suppose, in a game about a, about a mythological conflict that never actually took place, or maybe did, we're not entirely sure. Yeah. No, sorry, you're still losing me. And then, furthermore, heavy infantry cannot be flanked. And they have better stats than light infantry in every department, except from speed. Ex I'm sorry, except for speed. See, I like to reserve judgment until I actually play the game. I really would like to do that, but with statements like these, what do you expect people to think? Because what I'm thinking now is I kind of see why this is free to play, but again, people have talked about this before. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you're, if you're interested in Total War, which admittedly isn't the most popular thing on my channel, but 
it's understandable. I just love playing those games and I'd be playing them in my own time anyway. So, um, if you are trying to go for like new audiences and trying to present a more streamlined game, this isn't like, it's just, n n what? N no! No, and, and I guess, like, cost could be a thing. The heavy infantry could be the most expensive thing in the universe, but it's like, even then, is it is it ever worth... I don't know. Like, I, I guess cost could be... Uh, and unit upkeep could be, like, a balancing factor of it all, but seems like a strange design choice, at least, simply because for decades now we had a unit type system that doesn't need changing. Nobody's bored of the unit types. People get fed up of, you know, playing maybe the same faction or playing the same timeline or the same, um, you know, Total War game, I suppose, yes, but it's not the fundamental core aspects of Total War that people don't like. If they didn't, the game would, like, Total War games across the board wouldn't be, I dare say, the most popular strategy game genre in the world. So, obviously, like, keeping the core fundamentals of what is Total War is necessary, and they seem to be shaking these fundamentals up. But, I've rambled on long enough about the specifics of Troy. Um, I'm sure a lot of people already are familiar with this. I want to take a look at the sort of bigger picture, which I haven't really seen anyone talk about, more or less. And that's the design choice and the design philosophy behind Total War games in recent years. Now, this is the thing that has me worried more than the release of Troy itself, and again, I fully understand that this is a new development company, um, I think Sophia was it, right? Anyways, uh, I understand that this is entirely new, but it follows a trend from I would say Rome 2, maybe like you can argue from before that, but let's say Rome 2 to Thrones of Britannia. And that is questionable design, design decisions, unfun mechanics, dumbing down of the game, and generally just, I think, worse quality and just, just a decrease in the quality of the products they produce. Now, they've had moments of brilliance, don't get me wrong. Um, Three Kingdoms is pretty darn popular, and it's getting DLC, and I'm glad that people enjoy it. It's not for me, personally, not a huge fan of just, you know, have every faction on the map having the same units, or the same roster, sorry. An important difference between the two. Um, you yeah, know, it's just like, it, it's not for me personally, but I understand. However, what I don't quite understand is... Why a sort of... Why this sort of major departure from proven and successful design philosophies? So what I mean by this is Total War is innovated, often. Um, since Rome 2, Total War has innovated actually with pretty much every next Total War game, apart from Napoleon and Empire, but, you know, yeah. Um, or the, the innovation from Empire to Napoleon wasn't that great, but it's the same time period, like, the games released relatively, um, close to one another on a time scale, so yeah. Anyways, um, point being, the games have, uh, have often innovated. They first introduced, like, religion in, in Barbarian Invasion, and different agents, and the Crusades mechanic, and then the new recruitment system. I mean, just take a look at from, from Rome to Medieval, there's been a huge amount of, in, of, of innovation, and they've continued this trend, I'm happy to say, very often, but now innovations come in a different shape and a different size. Now innovations come not to provide a fresh take, a fresh look, or a... Um, or a different experience within Total War, but rather provide new and fun, interesting things to do, but rather they come at the detriment of other things. So now, like, the, the, the new mechanic introduced is the three types of infantry, which 
off the get-go seem objectively worse than the previous system, but if not that, then at the very least they seem like a trade-off. A negative trade-off. One where you don't gain more than you've lost. I mean, we've lost cavalry, which is fun to use. It's it's a fun unit. It's and and we've gained infantry that moves at the speed of cavalry. I, I don't know until I play it, obviously, but like, still, it's the type of the type of innovation has changed and uh, has not changed for the better, in my opinion. Also. Um, Generally, they've been aiming for a more streamlined, simple, apart from Warhammer. Warhammer, like, I'll talk about Warhammer in a bit. But apart from, from Warhammer, they've, they've aimed at a sort of more simple, open kind of Total War game. Open in the sense of easier to pick up by everyone. And it's, it's not been really paying off. And they continue to pursue this line of reasoning, I suppose, and it's... Eh, I don't know, it's it's questionable at best, in, in my opinion, but, again, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I don't know anything. It's just, like, my two cents on the entire thing, I suppose. Okay, now, um... All of this is true, except in the case of Warhammer. I talked about this in my in my Let's Play series. I think Warhammer is the single greatest Total War game ever created. Warhammer 1 and Warhammer 2, I sort of view them as one game, and you know I don't have a problem with them being $120 off sale when, when they're not on sale. Um, there's there's just so much content, there's so much to do, I, I talked about this. The game's not easy as well, like, it, this is a difficult game, alright? Uh, most of the negative comments about Imric, which is kind of why I, why I wanted to, to play as Imric for the, for the background footage, uh, most of the, the negative comments about Imric are that his campaign is too hard. Even though he's a free DLC lord, he doesn't have, like, the greatest ratings on Steam because people are complaining that it's too hard. Um, I don't exactly see how. I mean, I, I, he's... Don't get me wrong. It's a difficult campaign, but it's not the most difficult in the world. Anyways. Um, not that it really matters. I, uh... I was more looking to focus on, on like, the general scale of the game, and you have, like, every different faction has its own unique mechanics, and this is just unprecedented, I think, because in every previous Total War game you had either groups of factions, or you had, like, um, how do I put this, um, you had certain core mechanics that factions shared within, you know, slight deviance of each other, but no, here, like, every faction, every race, has a unique set of things that they can do, and, like, unique rights and, and mechanics, and there's, like, every one of them has a completely unique tech tree that they don't share with any other race on the map. Uh, so, yeah, it's like, it's... The scale is off the charts, and it is, by all means, one of the most successful Total War games ever made. Um, so yeah, like, in general, this... I, I think, at least to my mind, everything seems to point to one thing, and one kind of design approach, which is the, the good old Roman and medieval kind of um, Total War games and Warhammer-style Total War games, if we're going to talk about more modern ones and, and within this engine. And yet Total War, as a franchise, apart from Warhammer, which is like, you know, the, the shining bright beacon, even in Three Kingdoms, which, don't get me wrong, isn't a bad game, um, tends to follow a different design, choice, design pattern that doesn't seem to yield good results. Financially, community satisfaction wise in in across the board so I'm kind of struggling to understand why um, and I think Thrones of Britannia is the most smelly example on the pile of manure that that have been well okay that's that's a bit harsh but like at least compared to the other games right it's been yeah it's, it's been strange to say the least anyways. Enough about that. Um, 
may look upon me. I have some Skaven to kill. Uh, I think I'm going to do this. Okay, so, anyway, um... Yeah. Um, alright, sorry, I sort of lost my train of thought there for a second, but I should be really wrapping this up soon. So, there is just one more thing that I that I think is really, really important that I, and, and that I want to talk about, and that is, um... The rebranding, uh, I guess I'm going to call it, of certain things within Total War that is kind of irritating more so than anything else for me, personally. What I mean by this is... Again, this is like since Attila, I think, they've started introducing a supposedly quote-unquote new mechanics that, to be fair, weren't in the previous game, or in some cases were in the previous game, but just didn't mention them, uh, or didn't, didn't highlight them as much. Uh, they, they started introducing, again, quote-unquote, these mechanics that were there from the beginning. So I'll give you an example of this. Uh, they've, they said that in, in Troy they've introduced a mechanic whereby if your archers shoot at infantry with shields from the back, where, you know, their shields aren't pointing, they're gonna do more damage. This has been a thing since Rome 1. Th this is not a new feature, this is furthermore a feature in Warhammer as well, it's a feature in freaking medieval, in, in Rome 2, in, in, god, it's everywhere, barbarian invasion, so on and so forth. It's, it's a complete non-feature and that, and that they're marketing it as a new thing, it's strange. It's not the word I would use, not, not, I mean, not to sound too harsh and say something else, it's strange at the very least, right? So anyways, be this as it may, um, what essentially I'm saying is I'm worried. I'm worried about the design choices and I'm worried about the general state of Total War for the historical titles and for Troy because I think they've just made bad decisions. I genuinely do. I think they've just made bad decisions over the years, and that's not a problem. It's fine to make bad decisions. Everyone needs to make bad decisions to learn from them, and that's the point. They don't seem like they've learned from anything that they've done recently, and it's... It's worrying. It's, it's pure and simple. It's worrying. Um, for someone that's that's been a huge fan of the Toad War series for a, a while now, it's something that I hope changes, but um, I don't see it changing anytime soon if they continue this trend of um, just not taking into account some blatant and obvious facts like the failure of Thrones of Britannia. Right, that game has been reworked, quote-unquote, and then abandoned again. Um, it simply didn't do well, and it doesn't do well today. I think there's more people watching people play Thrones of Britannia than, than there are playing, and it's not the most popular game on Twitch. Um, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, yeah, like, like, jokes aside, it's... You know. It's, um... It's worrying, and I, I hope the design philosophy behind it changes. Until then, I have zero interest in, in Troy so far. I will, I will pick it up because it's like my hobby um, to, to make YouTube videos, and I think I'll, I'll be able to make a more informed and uh, precise and harsher, I'd say, critique of the game, if it warrants such a thing, um, because then I'll be actually playing it. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just sad. <laughs> Anyways, though, let's um, let's wrap this up uh, with with uh, me saying that I hope things change for the better. Obviously, in the near future, because otherwise, the historical titles for Total War, which were my favourite for a, for the longest time, seem like a you know not a thing to look forward to at all nowadays. And um, yeah. 
I just hope that they can learn from their mistakes and that we can get better products in the future and, and for their sake as well as, as ours. Um, they've been cutting down too much content, they've been reinventing the wheel, they've been dumbing down the games quite often and... You know, it simply... it simply didn't work. It simply did not work. And it continues to not work for, for Troy as well, in, in my opinion. But anyways, I'm, I've been ranting on for too long. I'll cut it uh, I'll cut it here. Thank you all for watching. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about the current state of Total War, about Troy. Do you look forward to the game? I'd love to hear like a like a different opinion on it. Maybe like, you know, you, you love what you've seen so far. And don't get me wrong, I like the idea of a mythological slash historical game sort of mixed together, you know what I mean? I, I do like the idea, it's just that so far the execution seems pure and simple not that great. Anyhow, be that as it may, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe down below if you enjoyed the video, and stay tuned with the rest of the content that I produce for the channel. My name is Juggernaut, have fun, take care, and bye bye